Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. You know what? It's been an awesome summer, but it's over, which means it's fall, which means there's some great stuff getting ready to take place at the Botanical Garden. And Kelly Welsh and Emily Clack are going to tell me about it. How you doing? doing? Good. How are you? Okay, let's. I, great. I need to get this hot, miserable summer behind me and ask you guys a very technical question. Okay. Okay, my yard, the only thing that thrived were the weeds and the tall grass. The garden looks gorgeous. How did you guys do that? A lot of watering, and we have fabulous gardeners who take care of our garden. They do a great job. They do. I mean, they do an amazing, I'm just so impressed with them. Okay, but, but, but why? I mean, is it, it's not just for our pleasure, is it? It's a big part of it. I mean, we want our guests to have an enjoyable experience when they come to the garden and learn and ask questions and ask some of those questions. We have gardeners available to ask <laughs> those questions, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, how do you get that hydrangea to turn that color, right? Mm -hmm. We're all about the educational opportunities regardless of what they are. I was going to say, as the educator there, what kinds of pressure do you feel? <laughs> Uh -huh. you know everything there is to know about flowers? <laughs> Not so much about the flowers. I spend a lot of time in the children's garden, so I'm learning all there is to do with families this fall. So that's my exciting time. Oh, cool. What is something to do with families? Um, well, right now we are actually offering um, our my favorite fall events, our Scarecrow Harvest Parties, coming up on the 28th of September. Um, so you can come out, have a s'more in the children's garden, do a little scavenger hunt, read a story, do crafts. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we also have some other events coming up for maybe the moms that want to help out. We have a lot of PTA moms that are interested in our new event for Shrimp, which is the Southampton Roads Museum Forum. Um, we're doing a teacher open house for all the local museums. Okay. They can come out and we're going to showcase all of our SOL aligned programs so that oh, no, wait a minute. Come teachers on. can come SOL. out. SOL. SOL. For, for a garden? Virginia Standards of Learning. What Everybody kinds of things are on the SOLs? Well, for my programs, I focus a lot on our science based programs. And that so makes we sense. Talk about um, nature, habitat, camouflage, mimicry, all those fun things that animals do that kids want to know more about. And they go to WOW? Um, they go to the children's garden. We also try and visit some of our other areas, like Friendship Pond is a big one. I like to watch the turtles and fish and everything else. Cool. Kelly, I'm going to ask you a personal question. Oh, goodness. Because it's been, what, a year? How long have you been at the garden? No, now? I've only been there just a few months, like five months. I it seems so. like I've been there well, for a long time. Well, I was going to say, when, I, when you first sat on that sofa, I think you've been there maybe two weeks. Yeah, I, yeah. And was it was a real all newbie. about the idea that the butterflies actually had a house. Yeah, the butterfly house. We have a great event coming and up. And you were really excited about the garden. Yeah, I'm still excited. It's so interesting because I've been there for two seasons, summer, spring and summer. Okay. So I'm looking forward to the fall um, just to see the different, you know, changes in the landscape. So, what's going to happen in the landscape? The it's roses, it turn. changed. It, roses in October is a big... Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, you have to come to the garden in October. I haven't been there in October, so I'm excited to see all the roses. See, I just think of raking leaves and Oh, no. Fall. Well, you need to come to the garden. Okay, so what else is... fall see. color. <laughs> I know, but the fall color when it's up and then it ends up down and then you got to rake it and then what do you do with... Is well, that's that why you come see us because our gardeners that's all right. keep it we pretty That's right. We have people to take care of that. <laughs> Yeah. To make it all pretty. I just realized I sounded like Eeyore. <laughs> is, that the, is that the end of the summer? It's exciting though. So what kind? Cool. Okay. So what else besides SOL stuff and learning? She's all learning. Well, and it's, it's a lot about education, and it can be education can be fun. Okay. And we have um, on the 22nd of September, we have our Monarch tagging and release. So you can come in. It's with admission. So Are you come in. You can tag a butterfly. And then throw them out of the house. And we'll not throw them out of the house. You have to be a little gentle, okay. but they fly away. And then their destination is Mexico. So it's so cool that, you know, there's interesting facts that I've learned. So I'm still excited about the garden because I'm still learning <laughs> new things. Kelly, you just told me you're not going to Mexico, but your butterflies are. Right. And you're excited about that. I'm excited because it's an interesting fact. They and actually go. They fly to Mexico. That's their destination. And it's so cool. But it's a tiny little tag. Right? Yeah. Just and I don't know if people out there have um, noticed, but there's lots of mushrooms. Yeah. They're in there. my weeds, tall grass, and mushrooms. We've had a lot of moisture. We've had a lot of rain. And that's certainly what mushrooms love. Um, and we have a lot in the garden. We have a great workshop coming up 
um, on the 22nd as well. On so, how not to eat the mushrooms in New York. Well, there's, well, yeah, you shouldn't eat them unless you really know what you're doing. But um, there are some that are edible. Um, but this workshop is really cool. It's find and dine. And we have um, Alan Muscat, who's known as the Mushroom Man, who's going to be there. And he's going to walk people through the garden and um, find mushrooms. And if there's some edible, we might get to taste a few. If they have a V, I don't know. <laughs> There's, There's a lot to Always know. ask an expert before yeah. you turn Better. it in. But we have, <laughs> you know, we have always so bad. many good things going on at the garden. We have a wildlife photographer that's coming in um, to teach a class, and that's a great opportunity for photographers out there. And we have Fun Fitness with Fido coming up in October, so you can bring your dog now to the garden. that one sounds... Oh! You can bring your dog to the garden in October. One time only. It's a one time only, but there's gonna there's With activities bags. for the dog. Yeah, there's <laughs> activities for the dogs, and um, some of the proceeds will go to the SPCA. So a lot of good stuff going on. Cool. In fact, there's so much going on. Your best bet probably is to get a membership. It's so worth worth it to get a membership to get a, fa a family membership. It's eighty five dollars for the entire year, and that includes six people. Cool. So you go a couple times and you've gotten your money's worth. And, and, if so, you, and there's so, discounts too. And it gives you a good reason to go find five friends. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and does it get you into the Garden of Lights? It gets you a discount. It gets it you gets a, discount. a discount. Yeah, so it's for the whole family and, cool. you know, coming Well, don't give away too much in the Garden of Lights because I want to have you back. We'd to love talk to come about. back and we'll have a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on. A lot going on. Butterflies leaving for Mexico. That's the news flash. Thanks a lot for everything <laughs> that you guys are doing. We're really bringing live out there, even though it's fall. And you know what? The best place to be during the fall is in seven venues. Stay tuned to find out where they're at. Shock him. Is it real all the time? We just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed. You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. You'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Clear. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Shock him. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, I promise you we are going to answer my favorite <laughs> trivia question of all time, and Mari may or may not know the answer, so pay attention. Okay, first question, Mari Hodges. Yes. How you doing? I'm good. First of all, you got a promotion since the last time you were I on. I did. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for noticing and mentioning it. <laughs> that is so cool. You are now the marketing director, which means what? So basically before I just handled the press and media, so the public relations side of things, but now um, I'll add on the marketing aspects, which means the nitty gritty of actually buying media, buying advertising to advertise all the shows coming up, and then to advertise the Seven Venues brand as well. So it'll be both things, PR and marketing. Okay. So what you're telling me is <laughs> just coming on North for Perspectives and telling our viewers everything that's going on at the Chrysler's not enough? <laughs> Bob, in a perfect world, it would be. I wish it were. But there's it. a couple major dailies out there, TV. Yeah, there's a lot of other media. Yeah. But because, I mean, I, I kind of want, want to ask you about that because really the, the whole production world, mm -hmm. I think, is something that we don't really understand. I mean, I, I want to go see Darius Rucker. That's a hint. Mm -hmm. um, I get my two tickets. My wife and I go. We enjoy the show. We go out to dinner. We do all kinds of tremendous things, but there's a lot of moving parts to make that happen. Isn't there? Oh, absolutely. The, well, there's a basic announcement of a show, and then, you know, just announcing in the old days would be sending a press release to your local right. newspaper. Now you have the whole social media element. Facebook, Twitter, you ask the artists to put it on their Facebook and Twitter accounts as well, so people who follow them who might live in the area would know. Then you have the actual placement of the advertising, um, TV, radio, print, social media. That's just to get people to find out about the show. Then you have to get them to part with their money and actually buy a ticket. So. You know, with the economy, a lot of people, a lot of marketers will try different things and see what sticks. You know, Groupon is a new wave in, uh, in marketing techniques. We see, we've seen a lot in the industry, and a lot of the TV and major dailies have adopted their own forms of that as well. So while venues aren't big on discounting because we don't want to discount the product, it's tricky in a saturated market with a lot of competition 
to get your message out there effectively and then to get people to part with their money, especially now, mm -hmm. you know, that's not easy, and then to get them into the theater. So you have to make that experience as great as possible, more than ever. More but than what's ever. cool is then you have like Brian Regan on the 23rd of September coming in. Mm -hmm. He's got a following of people who have bought his, his CDs or have heard him on Comedy Central or you know, right. the, the, the serious uh, comedy and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm that they may live 300 miles away, this is mm -hmm. the closest it's going to be, so how do I get to Norfolk to see them, right? Right, so that's where we work with our partners in the city convention, visitors, uh, visitors bureau, tourism board, so they help publicize a lot of the events we have, because their job is to make Norfolk appealing, so if they can say, hey, we have, you know, besides dining and shopping, we have these great entertainment options, that's where they come in to help us, so. Now, you also have to be serious about looking at different demographics. Right. You've provided in my crack research a list of all, <laughs> I mean, it seems like 25 people are coming. I didn't even know there were that many days in, in September. We all the stuff going on at Chrysler uh, Hall. But I gotta tell you, a lot of these people, I didn't know, but yet they've got a huge following. Right, right. That's the great thing about Seven Venues is that we appeal to a humongous array of demographics. We have everything from R&B to children's shows to sporting events to the recognized ballet and opera productions. So to set up a stage, tear it down, get people in and out, in and fill the building. Like, it's exactly like you said. You have to know where to market these shows, how to market mm -hmm. these shows. It's not as simple as just placing it out and putting okay. it out Okay, well, here's the trivia question of the segment. Okay. October 12th to 13th, you got a group coming in. It's a Broadway play uh -huh. that's touring. And a, um, let me see, how can I put this? Regis Philbin, who everybody knows, mm -hmm. he, he actually is uh, opposite this show on another station. He used to be because he retired. That's right, that's right. But prior to having his own show, uh -huh. he was the sidekick of one of the Rat Packs. Which one? Wow. Da, 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 da. I'm going to go with Joey Bishop. Yep, Joey Bishop. <laughs> Joey Bishop went up against Johnny Carson. Right. Right. He was a psychic, really of milk That was. That's so funny to hear. Long that. before you were watching TV. <laughs> Uh, and that show was how long? Three years? In that probably about three years, I think, it was on. Okay. And uh, for those that know better, uh, give us a holler, 664-6510, and yeah. correct me. But, but the rack pad, I mean, that's yes. got a wide appeal, doesn't it? This does. This is this show is so much fun because it's very ritzy and it has. It's going to. It's pretty much an homage to when the four performers Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., and Joey Bishop were at the Sands in Vegas back in the '60s. So their renditions of all the songs, "My Way," "That's the Mori," "Mr. Bojangles," they're uncanny renditions. So they'll take you through all that, and you can be in Norfolk but go to Vegas, circa 1960s. So. See, kind of like you, you don't even have to fly there like the butterfly. <laughs> go to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish. Fine would probably be better in the 60s back then. <laughs> I know. But it'll, it's going to be a lot of fun. And these performers are excellent. Again, this is our the first show of our Broadway season. And we bring in uh, national, nationally recognized touring companies. We work with Jam Theatrical. So you, you're getting bang for your buck. This is a high quality show. It's, and and it, when they put on their show, the beauty of their show was it didn't seem like they were performing. Right. They were just friends that got together and kind of sh shoot, shot the breeze. Yeah, and they recreate, exactly, they create recreate that banter and that camaraderie that I think is missing in a lot of acts today. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of things are choreographed, so. I see on September 22nd, it, it kind of is a representation of how we've become quite an international mecca. Mm -hmm. India Fest? India Fest, yes. We love them. They're a great um, addition to our calendar. They've been coming to us for a few years now. So basically, it's just like it says. It's a festival of all things um, from India. It runs from 11 in the morning to 7 at night. It's free, open to the public. And if you were to come, Bob, basically what you would see is all around the arena, there are vendors and they're selling all kinds of food. Curry, sweets, bread. Ooh, cool. Yeah, and then they'll have beautiful clothes for sale. They have caftans, tunics, embroidery is exquisite. They'll do um, Bollywood inspired uh, musical acts. So it's just, it's literally an explosion of color. It's so beautiful. There's art, religious artifacts for sale, and the people are so friendly, and we love having them in the building. Cool. Really now, Mari, I would only do this to you because you are thinking I'm going to ask you about Anthony Hamilton, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, what are the seven venues? Ah, 
Okay. Okay, yeah, that's okay. shaking it up a little bit. So the seven venues are Scope Arena, the yep. big arena, and it's right Where next door. Champion, Calder Cup champion, Admirals are playing. Home to, yeah, the Norfolk Admirals. They're starting soon in October, yep. so we wish them a lot of success. Um, next door is Chrysler Hall, our performing Where arts. all of these people that we're supposed to be talking right. about. Right, everybody before. that we're talking about today, except for one, will be there, and it's home to the symphony as well. Um, and then we go over to the Harrison Opera House. We also have home to opera, obviously, the Wells Theater, home to the Stage Company, the Attic Theater, which is a historical African-American theater down on Church Street. We, of course, have the Ballpark, Harbor Park. And then our last uh, venue is called Prism Theater. And basically, if you're too big for Chrysler Hall, but you can't fill out the arena, we can stage the arena with pipe and drape and curtains. So for anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 6, right in there to fill, you know, your needs. Okay, now my crack research would tell me <laughs> there's actually an eighth venue. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, do tell. The basement of Christ. <laughs> That's right. That We don't call it the basement. Oh, you don't? <laughs> you call it what? That's not, well, that's not how we market oh. it. So we. I guess that's why I sit in this chair and you got the promotion to marketing director. <laughs> We um, call it Little Theater, the Little Theater at Chrysler Hall. So it's underneath Chrysler Hall, and it's home to generic theater. They do all their productions. They're there. doing some of the coolest, most creative theater down there now. They are. They are. Actually, our designer on staff is an integral part of their uh, shows. She's in a lot of their productions. And when you see people coming out of their shows, they always have great things to say. It's a hidden gem. It's very unexpected talent. And well, don't tell them they're not the basement of Chrysler Hall, because no. I tell them they are. So, you know. <laughs> Okay, hey, Anthony Hamilton. Anthony Hamilton. He, October 5th. October 5th at Chrysler Hall. This is going to be a great show because you're getting three for the price of one. He is bringing Estelle with him, which is a Grammy Award winning singer. And they're also bringing Antoine Dunn, which is an up and coming um, new R&B artist. So Anthony Hamilton is one of those artists who has put his hands on everything. Incredibly talented. Started singing at 10. To date, he's sold or worked on over 20 million albums worldwide. He's worked with Jill Scott, Babyface, great R&B singer, incredibly talented. We have one minute, so I want to squeeze okay. in. Tedeschi Trucks Band? Tedeschi Trucks Band is a husband and wife duo. Great. One is Tedeschi. Susan Tedeschi and Derek Trucks. He's uh, the That's almond the name. Rider. There's no Derek. trucks involved in this band. <laughs> no demolition okay. derbies or anything yeah. like Good. that. It's all jazz and blues. Best live performance for your money. You're going to love it. Really. Cool. There's, they're actually keeping up with us on these videos. Yeah, right? That's I'm cool. Impressed. Okay, Mike is doing comedy, and he's awesome. And his last name is? Berbiglia, Mike Berbiglia. He is great. He's going to be at the Attic Theater. He's the only artist I mentioned today who's at the Attic Theater. And he walks people, the audience, through all his romantic blunders. And he tries to give reason to love, which is clearly impossible. Oh, you know what? I started the segment <laughs> off by saying I definitely want to hit Darius Rucker. It sounds like I need to hit <laughs> Get some tips. Mike. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mari, for everything that you're doing Thank to you bring the story alive, but also bringing some great stuff right My here pleasure. to the seven venues. My pleasure. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Jeff at the Chrysler, and he's going to tell you what's going on behind that bulldozer, because there's a lot going on. Stay tuned. <laughs> Pain will not control us. It will never break us, define us, or keep us still. Because arthritis can't beat us if we beat it first. In the fight against arthritis, you need a weapon. What's yours? Visit the Arthritis Foundation at fightarthritispain.org. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I have a really special guest, Jefferson C. Harrison, Ph.D., <laughs> Chief Curator, Curator of a Amer Amer European Art. How about Did that? you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most I just days. know you as Mr. Chrysler <laughs> Museum. Oh, you're very kind. I've been there a while. Yeah, how long have you yeah. been there now? Uh, almost 30 years. Did you ever think, okay, did you know the bulldozers were coming? Yes, yes. We've known the bulldozers were coming for about... A year and a half. Yeah, but they're taking the front of the building off, Jeff. They, yeah, they are. They are. Oh, and you knew that. that. And that's all, that's all to the good. 
um, because basically they're working in two areas that are going to move 30 feet forward towards the Hague, and we're going to get new first and second gallery space on both of those wings. So that's all part of the plan. Okay, but do you guys have to come in early and straighten the pictures? <laughs> I mean, I just we, had some work done, and yeah, it, they hammer on the wall, and the picture goes cooking. We, well, we've had some vibration, and, and we knew that in advance, and we're doing our best, sort of like musical chairs, keeping the galleries open, but moving things that might be in harm's way, that might suffer vibration, moving those off walls, reinstalling them elsewhere, bringing them back after the vibration's over. We're keeping as much of the museum open uh, until the end of December. Did you guys ever think it might be easier just to kind of close and do it? <laughs> well, that's that's kind of what we're going to do. I in mean, January. I thought that's what you're. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah, do yeah. that in January. Yeah, but we we really wanted to keep it open as long as we could, um, and the contractors and the builders and so on have been absolutely wonderful about working with us to delay that closure until the beginning of, of 2013. Now, uh, we don't like to use the word close. No, because you're not. Because we're not. Uh, we're in transition after that until early 2014. And what we're going to do then is take the art that's normally in the building to Hampton Roads, to the community. We're going to bring the Chrysler to the community. Um, so we're going to have... Um, uh, exhibitions that we're either organizing or participating in in um, Portsmouth, downtown Portsmouth, TCC, or uh, at the uh, Virginia Beach at the Oceanfront, at Virginia Beach MoCA, uh, at the Gordon Gallery, uh, at ODU. We're looking for a downtown uh, Norfolk venue now uh, so we can be right in the midst of the business district with our art bringing so it out cool. there. Yeah, Glass Studio stays active, uh, and we're moving our uh, American paintings to the Norfolk History Museum, so they will be on display there, our 19th century American masterpieces. And as I said, we're still open uh, until um, the end of December, and we've got a full program up and running um, in-house. Let me ask you, 30 years ago, if, if somebody had said, okay, during tough economic times, we're going to buck the system and go free. Right. We're going to tear off the front of the building and keep it open. <laughs> Would you have believed all this? I mean, and and we've got Bill Hennessy sitting on that sofa saying that the Chrysler is the number one place to have a date. Or oh. to get picked up, I think, is what he said. Actually. Oh, did he say that? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that you've got, I mean, free. the Wednesday nights and the coolets yeah. and all that? Yeah. I mean, did you ever think... Um, it, it has become, it's become a real centerpiece. Of the it really community. has. And it, it, it just makes me very proud. Um, I've seen lots of changes over um, the three decades that I've been there. I've seen the museum almost double in size. I've seen the, uh, uh, the staff almost double in size. Uh, we have three curators now who are endowed. That means fully funded in perpetuity. Uh, we have an endowment for free admission, so that benefit will never go away. We will always have that. Those doors will always open to everyone for free. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's, it would have made Walter Chrysler very, very proud. That's cool. Yeah. So there is nothing that you don't know about the Chrysler that, <laughs> oh, I don't, I wouldn't that, say cool, that. Or that would surprise you, and you are just quick on your feet when it comes to the Chrysler, right? Oh, I stumble a lot. I'm always surprised. Okay, well, we're going to do something we've never done on this show before. <laughs> okay. We're going to make you stumble. No. Okay, good. I'm going to throw a picture up. All right. Focus those eyes. All right. And it should lead you to a thought about an upcoming event during right. the time that the bulldozer is scraping the front of the building. Up. Okay. All right. Okay, Fair throw enough. our first slide up there. Fair enough. Oh. This can't be at the Chrysler. Uh, that is. That's going to be in um, the glass studio, otherwise known as the Hot Shop. Hot Shop. Hot Shop. I hear something coming. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, it's all yours. That's glass? You that is. Um, it, it, um, a um, brother team, all right? The Delatore brothers, who were born in Mexico and who have made their fame in California, are coming um, um, in September, and they're going to have... Um, um, uh, workshops and so on. They're going to blow glass. They're going to make um, these objects inspired by Mexican folk art and all sorts of other um, influences. They are, in some instances, playful. They are, in other instance, instances, um, um, pretty serious. 
Cool. Um, uh, but but uh, they're very colorful, and I think people will really enjoy that. That, that was here. looking. Okay, yeah. well, we got one more here All to right. throw up there. Let's, right. let's drum roll here, quick. <laughs> oh, more glass. We do. Well, one of the things we're going to do um, as we begin slowly to pull works off uh, uh, from view between now and the end of December is put our best hits in other places in the museum that are still open. We, we are closing our glass galleries bit by bit, but we're going to have the best of our Tiffany collection on view right off of Huber Court, right up until the end of December so that folks can see um, um, the wonderful things that they would normally come to the museum. It is really to cool see. to get up yeah. close and personal yeah. with oh, the Tiffany. Wow. Extraordinary things. Okay. Yeah. I didn't touch, though. No, okay, no, what's no. the next one? Yeah. Do we have another one? We may. Okay, we're going to war, right? Uh, right. Um, um, this is a, a photograph um, from an exhibition that's uh, opening in September uh, called Many Wars by a, a photographer named Suzanne Opton, who has photographed um, veterans of a series of wars, uh, wars beginning with World War II all the way up uh, through Afghanistan. Um, the one thing that these servicemen and women have in common is that they have suffered trauma in the service mm -hmm. of the country. Um, and she presents them as single figures, very heroic, very dignified, but focusing all the while um, on the extraordinary experiences um, that, that they went through in battle. Cool. Yeah. Guess what? Go. You did it. Did I do it? You saw the pictures, you gave us good information, and our time is up. Oh, my golly, that was yeah. easy. Now you got to buy a ticket to Rat Pack. we got to go see the Rat Pack. That's cool. Jeff, thanks for Thank guiding you. us through Thank that you. construction scene. Absolutely. But also keeping the spirit of the Christ for love. I loved what you said about Walter P. would be very proud. I think he would be. Because it yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood? Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you.